hey, we're talking technology again. Today, I'm going to tell you more about the technology, the software that we use getting our show from the recording over to actually getting published on the RSS feed or on the podcast shows on the platforms and the directories. So we record our podcast remotely and we're recording it through Zoom. Now, I've promised my podcasters, and I hope I'm right about this, but Squadcast has been reporting that they're coming out with a video version of their platform. And as soon as we do that, I'll be testing and quite quite possibly integrating that into our process for um, you know promotion and production when it comes to getting the content out across the internet. So right now, Zoom it is. I know that there are better solutions, but again, as you'll see me repeat over and over again, this the software I use doesn't just affect me. It affects the person that I'm meeting with. It affects my clients. And I want the highest quality that we can get without breaking the bank, something that we can at least, even if we spend more uh, con- you know, consciously, we are like we're deliberately going, okay, we're going to spend more. I want it to be something we can calculate. So some of the tools you want to watch for, they will bill based on how many shows you do or how many hours you do. And I don't, if you're new to podcasting, you might not know this. If you've been in it around enough, then you likely know. But if, unless you're doing a live show or you only do interviews on, you know, Tuesdays or something like that, if you're not doing something like that, then you're likely recording when your guest sets up the appointment. So they'll set up the appointment for, you know, certain days or whenever it works for them. And so one week you might have, you know, four interviews, another week you don't have any one month, you might have, you know, 15 interviews. So I I always keep that in mind is I want to make it flexible so that my podcasters have as much control as possible. And zoom just fits the bill. I mean, the quality comes out, we know how to process it to get the best quality possible. A lot more has to do with the microphone uh, than anything, quite honestly. And we urge our guests to make sure that they plug into the internet with an ethernet cable. So that's more important even than the software you use, unless you're using a tool that records locally. So like if your guest records locally on their own computer and then it gets sent into the internet and synced, there is software that does that. However, if they have a bad internet connection, it's going to affect their experience trying to upload it. I mean, do you really want to contact your guest and be like, hey, it didn't upload? I mean, when I used a local recording, it was a nightmare. And I I had a a guest that I tested with. I told him ahead of time, I'm like, hey, we're going to test out the software. And it was, it was, it was awful. And so I just said, nope, my relationships with my guests are too important. I'm not going to put them through that. Now, technology is evolving really quickly. And so I don't think that's going to be my stance for long. And as soon as we find a solution that's super easy for the guest, super easy for us, and we can all record locally and it syncs up and everybody's happy, we will be jumping. For now, it's Zoom. So we, we record on Zoom. And then that recording, we've set up a Dropbox so that all those recordings automatically are put into a specific Dropbox folder. And then I have a zap that sends out a notification to our production team that, hey, look alive, something just got recorded. And then they're able to put the file where it's supposed to go. And then all the beautiful magic happens of automation and our wonderful CVPAs who run the 41 plus pieces process and gets that content put out there. So how whatever your process is, it's just really nice to have that that recording automatically put over into Dropbox. And then because we don't wanna pay extra for a ton of storage on Zoom, we have it automatically deleted from Zoom within a certain number of days. Having said that, just be aware and go in and check that it's working on occasion or have your assistant do that. So Zoom to Dropbox. And then from Dropbox, we I mentioned this on a couple other videos, but then it goes through Descript. You know, we downloaded software from Descript.com and uh, we do our rough edit. Um, The video is edited using Premiere Pro. I know there are a lot of tools out there. Believe me, I think I've tried every single one. And at the end of the day, we have someone who creates templates that we're able to do open captions using Premiere Pro so that it's subtitled instead of, you know, like I don't like it when you have the closed captions that show up over the subtitles. So we just want open captions, subtitle, Boom, done. We do it in Premiere Pro. We have a video team 
uh, advanced video team and they put together the templates so that our VAs can create the videos using the templates. So that's what we do there. For the audio, now it just went through Descript. We do an advanced build for our show. Most of my clients, when you start out a new podcast, you just want to do the intro, you know, add the intro to the show, maybe add an outro, boom, done. If that's the case, then I would never use this next step. But with an advanced build, we use Audition and we, you know, layer a bunch of stuff and we do a bunch of things and it's really awesome and really fun. But we've been doing this a long time and um, I don't have, you know, like I have my own internal process for that. Uh, and everybody's process is different. So I suggest starting with a simple build. You've got your interview, you've got maybe you've got an intro. I highly recommend you have an intro and then an outro if you'd like. And um, if you're skipping the audition part, if you have a simple build, then we use, and regardless, even with our advanced build, we send the audio to Auphonic. So A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C.com. Auphonic is an AI based, it, they do, again, I'm terrible when it comes to all the tech, technical terms for audio, but it does all the leveling. Uh, it, it just makes it sound beautiful. It processes it. And I just can't say enough for the outcomes that we see. So if you go to Auphonic.com, they don't, it's, I'm not affiliated with them or anything. They don't have an affiliate program, but I you know, rave on and on about them all the time. But bottom line is, is we send our stuff they, their AI processes it very quickly and then we get it back and boom, we have a show. Uh, then we, uh, then we send it off to Libsyn. So Libsyn is where we host our podcast. And yes, I've looked at many, many other solutions at the end of the day. I just like, uh, I just like the flexibility of Libsyn. I like they're reliable. Um, you know, their interface is still, you know, it looks a little bit like it did when I first started <laughs> podcasting. Um, but the the fact of the matter is, is they're reputable. The top pod, you know, top podcasters use them. They're amazing. I've just a ton of control over my own show. Uh, we can have multiple shows. I'm sure other platforms do that as well. Um, but yeah, so we use Libsyn. And then we, we put video onto YouTube and we optimize it using a tool called Tube buddy, tube buddy, T-U-B-E buddy, B-U-D-D-Y dot com. And we are able to optimize the show. We can get keywords. They do, uh, you can get like a full breakdown of, you know, research on the different keywords. And, um, and then they also have a checklist of the things to do to optimize it. Uh, but I just love tube buddy. So I highly recommend it super. And it's just super inexpensive. So, um, it's just one more thing to help you stand out even more. So I hope these tools were handy for you. If you have any questions about any of them, let me know. If you have questions about specific tools that I didn't mention for uh, steps, uh, please let me know. Or if you have questions about like why I use one over another, sometimes I have a good answer, sometimes I don't. But when I get questions like that, it actually spurs me on to double check that there isn't a better solution out there. Again, I'm quick to test, but slow to implement so that my clients aren't uh, being kind of driven around in a crazy car. <laughs> We're steady Eddie. And it's always important to me to keep the experience nice and smooth and seamless. So I hope that this tech talk was uh, helpful to you. And I'd love to hear your stories and what you use and um, any feedback. So happy podcasting.